Okay, so before we get into the interview with Morgan, I just want to show you something. This is actually a article that one of her prospects wrote after receiving the video email from Morgan. And so you can see she was so impressed by this outreach, she found it so remarkable that she decided to write an entire post about it. And you can see she included an, a link, a uh, screenshot rather, of the email, um, why she thought it worked, and also after she forwarded the email to the best person, the response she got back from Terminus, which is also back here, the use of video. And uh, you could see Morgan here with her manager saying essentially, thank you for making the introduction. So this is what happens when you create outreach that is so remarkable that people feel compelled to share it on Twitter or even write um, articles about it. This is what you should aspire to in your outreach. So let's actually take a look at the video and then we'll hear from Morgan. Hey, Rebecca, Morgan Gillespie here at Terminus. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. Wanted to make this quick video for you because I've been doing some research on MapQuest um, and came across your LinkedIn profile. Um, it looks like you are a beer connoisseur and you've worked with uh, numerous uh, beer companies. So wanted to kind of explain how account-based marketing can relate to a good craft beer. So if you look at that traditional sales or marketing funnel, you just put in a bunch of different leads and hope that um, you know, that will turn into revenue at the bottom of that funnel, which kind of uh, amounts to, you know, a bunch of cheap beer, I guess you could say. And um, if you were to take that funnel and turn it upside down and focus on your best fit target accounts, um, Terminus comes into play um, where we are able to put highly targeted display ads only in front of the key decision makers and job functions that you're selling to within those target accounts proactively. Um, so think of this as the opposite of a retargeting ad. It's actually pre-targeting. So these people, you know, they don't have to come to your website or interact with your marketing content to see these ads. In turn, you know, more customers in those target accounts of yours are going to be generating the right revenue for your company and you're going to be keeping on those great fit customers. So that kind of, you know, equates to, um, a good craft beer like the Sweetwater IPA. So um, Rebecca, would love to talk to you about your ABM efforts over at MapQuest. See if there's any way that Terminus can align and perhaps we can enjoy a cold one together. So hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to hearing your response. Morgan, thank you so much for carving out some time to chat today. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. Morgan, so let's go back in time for a second. Mm -hmm. Before this whole video stuff, what were you doing to secure meetings with your prospects? Yeah, so um, I was sending lots of emails um, and making tons and tons and tons of calls, hoping to get people on the phone. Um, and I was, you know, just following that process. I was told if I follow the process, it'll work and you'll set those meetings and, you know, ultimately hit your number by doing that. Um, so that is what I was doing before. <laughs> so what's the problem? I mean, follow the playbook, Morgan. Mm -hmm. send the emails, make the calls. What, what's the problem with that? Why not just do that? That's what everyone's yeah. doing. That's what everyone's doing. Why not conform, Morgan? So I was always taught, so I was a, a somewhat of a sales major in college, and my professor always told us work smarter, not harder. And I kept thinking back to that, what can I do that's smarter that's gonna give me the same or better results? So I started hearing about video and I got naturally curious because I'm just a naturally curious person. And I saw that people were, you know, kind of messing around with all this video stuff, sending it through email to their prospects. And I'm like, hmm, I think I'm going to try this thing out. I mean, what, what, what can it hurt just to try something? So I, you know, started experimenting with it. And at first I didn't see a lot of success. Um, but that was because I wasn't doing it the right way. Um, but I knew that if I kept going with it I, and kept tweaking it, I'd get to a good point. And so that's the beginning of my story right there. I think you bring up a good point, Morgan. And sometimes people write off a tactic and they don't think about the execution of that tactic. Right. Tactics can be done well and tactics can be done poorly. And I think your point here is, it's not necessarily the tactic potentially, 
it's the execution of the tactic, uh, which I think is what you're getting at. But let's go back to email for a second. You, you mentioned you wanted to do something smarter. What was it about emailing and cold calling that you felt was falling flat? What was the frustration you were seeing? Yeah, so with emails, you know, I, I had some decent open rates. Typically, that first point of outreach, you're going to have the highest open rate. But I didn't have a strong enough message I felt like I was getting across. You know, I would do a little bit of research and, you know, throw that into my emails. But it just wasn't hitting home as much as it could be. As far as, you know, making those phone calls, it's it's harder to get a person on the phone these days. It's just the reality. We have a lot of robocallers out there. People are more hesitant to answer the phone. Um, and I was still having some great phone conversations. But it wasn't, it was so cold that it was catching someone, sh you know, catching them and shocking them that I was giving them a call. So those were kind of the two different areas that could have been improved. And I can talk a little bit more about how video improved that once I learned how to execute correctly. Right. So you're, when you're sending these emails and you're making these calls, you're not getting the response rates that you, mm -hmm. that, that felt good on your soul. You were getting sort of rejected a lot. And it sounds like you didn't yeah. want to get rejected so much. And you started looking at other, other things. So you would, you would call somebody and like, just run me through that. How would that go? Like if I picked up the phone, I would say, yeah. hi, this, hi, this is Josh. And you would say, I say, hey, Josh, Morgan Gillespie calling from Terminus. How are you doing today? Or, or did I catch you out of the blue? Um, typically, they're like, yes, yeah, you did. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, gosh, this is already bad. <laughs> um, and then I say, well, hey, I, I know I'm catching you off guard here. We haven't spoken before, but I just want to let you know I'm calling from a company called Terminus. I understand you oversee X, Y, and Z efforts over at X company wanted to see we're selling account-based marketing software. So wanted to see if account-based marketing is a strategy on the radar for you guys. Typically, they're so shocked in that moment. And they're like, who's Morgan? Who's Terminus? I don't know. Maybe account-based marketing is on the radar, but I need to take a step back here before I can even decide how to answer this. So the first, and kind of jumping ahead of myself here, the first way that video helped me was it helped me by making my phone calls better. So that was my warm intro. Um, if they didn't respond to me through my video outreach in that first email, by God, they remembered me when I gave them a phone call. You know, I had someone on the podcast a week or two ago, her name was Shoshi, and, and she equates it to like that awkward moment when someone walks up to you in a bar and yeah. they're trying to strike up a conversation with you. It's, it's a little bit um, awkward. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. Okay, so you're seeing this feeling of rejection. It's not feeling good on your soul. And then video comes on your radar. And talk to me about early days. What did you learn when you first started doing it? Yeah, so I use a tool called Cadence, um, what I did as an SDR. And I said, okay, uh, I, I know a lot of people are doing these breakup email things. Like, <laughs> why not throw a video in there? So... I started making videos for everyone that trickled down to the end of my cadence that had never responded to me or picked up the phone at all. I said, this is, this is the last ditch effort kind of thing here. So I started making videos for people at the end of my outreach. I thought this was a great idea at the time. Little did I know that was, that was not a great idea. Well, take me through that. We talked earlier, Morgan, about execution. So mm -hmm. what, 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 Give us a sense of what those videos were like. And I know exactly what you're talking about with, that, with the breakup email. You know, did you mm -hmm. get one up with my unicorn or some crazy, you know, <laughs> yeah. ugh, god awful thing like that. But what did you do? What did you do there? Just give us a little sense. Yeah. So it, it was funny. I um, sometimes I would play some sad music in the background and I'd say, hey, I've been reaching out to you over the past few weeks here and I haven't heard back. Would love to just see if this, if account-based marketing is something that you guys are looking into. This is how we can help, so on and so forth. Um, those didn't really get opened. I think maybe out of the 50 I probably made, maybe like two or three were actually clicked because um, they had already written me off. Okay, so you, you did this breakup thing. It's not really getting anywhere. Rather than giving up saying video doesn't work, that doesn't sound like something you do. You're like, hey, let me evolve this into version 2.0. Take us through that process. Yeah, so version 2.0 came from a big company initiative, actually. Um, so we at Terminus said, hey, 
we have to be able to do account-based marketing or account-based sales in the best way possible. So we're going to incentivize our sales development reps to go after their best fit target accounts in a very thoughtful manner. And I said, well, I've been experimenting with this video stuff and I guess I can try this out. So I said, why don't I try doing video at the beginning of my cadence and giving him that most, that, that best first impression that I can possibly give. And so I, that's exactly what I did. I would go in, I would research the company, I'd research that specific person and I'd make them a video. And it, it was night and day. I mean, they had never heard from me before. They probably had never heard of Terminus before. We're, we're a smaller startup, and especially at that time, about a year ago. And the results were insane. And not only was it something that I was doing, but everyone across the team was starting to do this as well. And they said, well, it's working for Morgan. We need to start doing this and roll this out and make this standard for our team. All right. Um, so, so, go so, ahead. Take, so take me through this now. So you're making like these videos that I, I don't understand the process. I'm going to be as descriptive as I can possibly be for you guys. Okay. So let's so let's start with step one. Step one, pull up that person's LinkedIn. Come on, like it's the year 20, 2018. Everyone can get on LinkedIn and research someone. So for this specific example, let's talk about that craft beer video. I was researching uh, someone in marketing at a, at a pretty big company that talked on her LinkedIn about how much she loves craft beer. And I said, why would I ignore something like this? And so I went ahead and I, I kind of made a note. I said, she loves craft beer. Let's do something here. Let's do something with this. Then I went to the company's website. I start looking at their customers. That's very important for me to know. I'm trying to help these people, you know, break into accounts that are similar to their customers. So I start looking into their customers. They're big enterprise logos. It's hard to break into an enterprise account. So I say, okay, this account is a great fit. And this person likes craft beer. How do I make this correlation here? Some people will be like, there's no correlation at all, Morgan. <laughs> but I started talking about how account-based marketing can reflect um, craft beer, essentially. So if you think about it, we can talk about natural light or even Bud Light if you really hate Bud Light, but generating a lot of crappy leads is like drinking crappy beer, essentially. But account-based marketing is all about focusing your marketing efforts on those cream of the crop, best fit target accounts. So essentially a craft beer. Something that's been, has, you know, a lot of time goes into a craft beer. A lot of energy goes into a craft beer. So I tried to make that correlation there. So I took that and I said, based on the fact that you're going after cream of the crop enterprise accounts, it seems like account-based marketing would be a great strategy for you guys. So that's kind of how I tied it all together. Um, and I try and do that with multiple things. I've done that with, um, I went to this guy's LinkedIn, you know, that's step one, go to the LinkedIn and he likes to run marathons. And so I said, account-based marketing is a lot like running a marathon. It's a long-term play. A lot of thought, energy, and time goes into account-based marketing. It's not short sprints, like generating quick leads. <laughs> right, right. Cause he was in a marathon. Yeah. So then do you, do you script these out? Or how do you actually put them together? Um, I kind of speak from the heart. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not really big into actually building a script. Um, the, the one thing that people forget about videos is that videos are authentic. And you don't want to act not authentic in a video because people are going to catch on that, catch that very quickly. So if you write out a script and you kind of have it on your computer and you're staring at the screen too much, people are going to recognize that and they're not going to be as sold on, on you as a person and as sold on your on what you're trying to sell yeah and now this is a big thing i want to talk to you about in terms of your your personality mm -hmm. uh, talk to me about how much your personality comes into this because it's one of this your message and then the second part of this is how you're actually delivering it and for people that have never made a video before that could be challenging yes so it's funny i i try and be very 
outgoing in my videos. So I could have like, I could be head down all day long and you know, you wouldn't hear a peep from me. But when you get in front of the camera, it is important to be very outgoing, very likable and excited about what you're selling. But that also is the same case when you're cold calling someone too. So no one wants to hear from someone that's monotone, that doesn't have any inflection in their voice, that can't emphasize what's important. And so it's, I think that people who are good at cold calling can definitely just be just as good at making videos as well. So just to give people a sense of what you sound like, let's say, let's, let's say pull up my LinkedIn profile. Let's say I'm, I do triathlons. I don't even know if that's on my LinkedIn profile. I think it might be. Um, <laughs> and let's say I'm, I'm a candidate for account-based marketing. And I'm, okay. gonna really, I'm gonna really put you on the spot here because I want to uh, maybe just the first 10 seconds or so or 15 seconds. If we were to shoot this video and you were talking right at me right now, and I know you do a lot of these, but I want to yeah. challenge you a little bit. Like, hey, John, like, how would you start it? Like, give us a little, a little taste. All right, <laughs> you know I will. Okay, so Josh, hold on one second. Okay, so Josh. Um, Morgan Gillespie over here at Terminus. I hope you're having a fabulous Friday so far. Um, wanted to make this quick video for you. I'm sure you received tons of emails every single day. Wanted to do something a little bit to, to break through the noise. Um, so Josh, I've been researching you. Um, understand that you're a triathlete. And I realized that with being a triathlete, there's there's a lot of time, a lot of energy that go, that goes into, you know, winning a triathlete. It's a long-term play to get there, which is why I believe account-based marketing and training for a triathlete can almost go hand in hand. Uh, wow. That was pretty good improv. That, so that, <laughs> so what I noticed about that, Morgan, is the, the sort of belief and the energy. It sounds like you really do believe in your heart of hearts. And I talk about this a lot. If you're an account executive or an SDR, if you don't firmly believe that what you have can help your prospects. I don't think you can fake that. No, you can't. You cannot fake it. So tell me now, results-wise, uh, you use this now, and uh, what have you seen? How are you measuring your results? That's a great question. So I went back, actually, and I said, how many of the meetings that I sourced as an SDR was influenced by video? And it was around 77%. So the way I looked at it is people aren't always going to reply to your videos. People are busy. People, um, you know, may not have time to reply or they may not even be interested, but it's, it's that first point of outreach. That's going to make that best impression possible. So it could either be, I made them a video and then the next day I picked up the phone and called them and had a conversation, but you know, spoke about that video. Hey, I made you a video. I, I sent it your way yesterday. Not sure if you had a chance to watch it or not. Although I actually know if they watched it or not. <laughs> um, and I would open up the conversation from there. So how so, did that go? That's interesting. So you're actually referencing the video on the cold call and mm -hmm. do people normally say, I don't know what you're talking about or yeah, I saw it or. It, it's funny. It really changed my conversations from that. What I talked about earlier yes. um, to there. They're like, Either they're like, oh yeah, I watched it. That was so great. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I just haven't had a chance to reply to you yet, but I'm interested. Um, and then a lot of the times it would end up being like a 10 minute conversation because they're like, well, can you just tell me a little bit more like what you guys do before I take this 30 minute meeting with you? And then I get more, op more of an opportunity to kind of sell them what Terminus does. Or if they hadn't watched the video, they're like, oh, you, you made me a video? Really? And I'm like, yeah, um, I sent it your way yesterday. Sometimes they'll like literally pull it up as I'm on the phone with them. And they're like, oh, here it is. And I've heard people actually like sit there and watch my video while like I'm on the phone with them. Um, and so it, it's just a very different conversation rather than just, hey, just want I'm calling you out of the blue. Is this on the radar for you? Yeah. And I think too, the other thing that I'm hearing from you is it's not just that it's a video, it's a video on how you think you can help someone do something better and you're educating them on a way to achieve a result that they might not have achieved. It's not so much a pitch about Terminus. And right. what I'm also hearing is it sounds like there's almost like a reciprocity thing going on. Oh, you made me this thing. You gave me yeah. this thing. I almost feel like I have to respond in kind. Are you sensing that as well? People almost feel 
obligated yeah. in a sense to give you a, a second because you spent some time creating something uh, for them? Yeah. So I, I believe that like, and what I've learned being in sales is that it's not always about like, you know, receiving a demo, receiving that, you know, that contract, it's about giving, it's a healthy balance of giving and receiving. So if I give you this gift, what can you give back to me? If I don't provide any value to you, you're not going to be able to give me what I'm looking for as a salesperson. Right, right. So that's, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, I'm, I'm the first person that's like offering that up to them. I offered up my time. I, I offered up a specific way that I believe we could help your business because I researched you and I researched your company and I have a general understanding of how your business works. And how many of these do you do? Um, so as an SDR, I was making about 15 videos a day, anywhere from 15 to 20. Wow. Um, that sounds like a lot. Um, but each one of my videos, it's a, a little over a minute to a minute and a half, just depending on you know how detailed I can get based on what I find on them. Um, and once you get into the rhythm of making tons and tons of videos, you, you, you're kind of just train your brain, like where you have to look on their LinkedIn and where you have to look on someone's company's website to figure out, okay, now I can connect the dots for them. Um, now that I'm an account executive, um, it's a little bit harder for me to make as many videos. I still try to shoot for maybe two to five a day, just depending on how many calls I have that specific okay. day. And what tool are you using? Using like a Vidyard, using Loom? Using Vidyard, Vidyard. yep. Morgan, Perfect. this has been helpful. If there are SDRs out there that want to chat with you about using video in the best way, how would they get a hold of you? Through LinkedIn, find me on LinkedIn, <laughs> Morgan Gillespie. <laughs> Morgan, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. And if people want to learn more about your company, how do they find out about your company? Just go to terminus.com or reach out to me specifically. I'd be happy to talk with you. <laughs> and she don't, she doesn't, yeah, just reach out to her so she doesn't have to make you a video. Just give her a call, people. Come on, guys. Make my job a little easier on me here. <laughs> Morgan, thank you so much for joining the program. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed it, Josh.